very good morning to all of you. It's, it's a pleasure for me on behalf of Assumption University to extend a very cordial welcome to Her Excellency Mary Jo Aragon, Ambassador of the Philippines in Thailand. Uh, Her Excellency will be introduced most formally by Aaron, but I just want to say thank you, Your Excellency, because you are the first ever Filipino ambassador to be on the campus of Assumption University. And uh, this forum, Your Excellency, is called the Speaker of the Month. And today we have with us students from various countries. We have, as you can see, a large number from India. We do have from France, from China, from the Philippines, and from Germany. No? All right. But uh, this, this is the international texture University. And uh, I'm going to hand things over to Aaron. Of course, Farzine is from Iran, and I'm sorry that I overlooked that. Okay, Farzine is our student from Iran. He's a coordinator for our program here. So I'm going to leave Aaron and thank you again. Aaron, thank you. Good morning again, uh, Excellency, and colleagues of the Embassy of the Philippines. It's my pleasure to introduce the, the ambassador. Uh, from my uh, limited knowledge of the service, uh, you know, we have different countries and then we have countries representative. And this is the highest representative in a country in Thailand from Philippines. So we have really indeed a, a great honor to have the ambassador. I think, in, in fact, uh, you have uh, various levels of uh, positions and then the highest level of the representative of another country in, a, in, 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 in one other country is the ambassador. It's the first ambassador we have here. I, remember, I recall we have the ambassador Armenia uh, a little while ago in this same day. Yes. So we are very, very thankful that uh, Her Excellency Ambassador took her time off to come and talk to us. I have a very quick chat, and I want to, uh, if you go back, and then you guys, some of you are in my class, so then you Google up. Um, I had a very quick chat on, we are here, this is a business school. So we talked about a lot about business, we talked a lot about GDP. So if you look at very quickly, um, the Thai's GDP, you need to just Google it up and you'll find the Thai GDP at that particular period is 3.2. And in the same period, the Filipino GDP is 6.9. And comparatively, the Chinese at the same time was only 6.7. Today, we, I mean, this is 2016. But that's the latest uh, collected authoritative data. And I think uh, I'm very proud to have that nation who has such high growth rate, growth rate to come and address our school. And uh, you guys can ask many questions. My, 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 my job today is to, to coordinate and to mediate the, the questions you guys and not to dial her out <laughs> because you will have questions for her because she knows everything between Thailand and Philippines and Thailand. And of course, we have Indian students, we have Chinese students, we have the French students, we have uh, uh, Iranian students. Um, they're all in one place being the international uh, flavor of our university. Um, Surprisingly, I don't have that many Thai students this morning. Any anyone from Thailand here? Yeah. So specifically, they are here for, um, for uh, to listen to in this moment. They may be paying more attention to the, the presentation initially, and then uh, finally coming to your question and answer. So to introduce the the Excellency, the Ambassador, she has spent. Uh, she was just explaining to us she's going to retire a few years. So the. And while she's still the ambassador, you have time, she's the most important person in Thailand from the Philippines here representing her country. So um, I'm, I'm indeed uh, very honored, and I think you should feel very honored to be interacting directly with the ambassador, which in normal circumstances, I don't think so. She's such a busy person, you have such opportunity to have a one on one. So she's going to talk to us. She spent a lot of time at the home office. Uh, you know, if you think that she's about to retire, so she's in her 60s. So in her early uh, time, and even until today, she's still very active in the various committee in her home country and the Philippines. But then she's also uh, working all her way up uh, in the foreign office. Uh, in, 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 uh, in the United Nations, she was at one time and then uh, as a representative, but definitely early she started in Belgium, and then she went on to the uh, United Nations, and then now today she has been a, how long have you been in Thailand? and a half years. So she's been here uh, finishing her career perhaps and now she's retiring uh, in, in, in Thailand as the ambassador. Uh, 
as I said earlier, there are various uh, levels of, of uh, services in the, at the uh, representative office of, of the Republic of Philippines in Thailand. We have the ambassador, we have the second secretary, we have the commerce uh, uh, representative, uh, Enrico and Anna Marie. They are here too uh, to support her uh, uh, and ambassador. So let's uh, put our hands together and welcome the Excellency Ambassador of uh, the Republic of Thank you for being with us. Hello. Good morning. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Glenn, uh, Dr. Alan, and Dr. Pia for the uh, kind invitation. Uh, appear before uh, the, uh, the Graduate School of uh, Business. Graduate School of Business here at the Assumption uh, University. I'm quite pleased to learn that uh, there are Filipinos who are also studying here at the University uh, at the Assumption uh, University. I have uh, one right now who is doing her uh, PhD. And uh, I thank very much uh, Dr. Allen for kind of introduction of myself. Um, I also, um, I, I took up my uh, elementary and secondary in a Catholic school um, run by nuns way back in the Philippines after my late father brought us to, uh, together. He was also in the Philippine government and he was funded by the government to the International Atomic Energy Agency. So I finished my high school in Europe and went to college. So uh, that gave me the interest to, uh, to study international relations and political science as uh, I, I find it very rewarding and self-fulfilling that you, know, you get to meet a lot of uh, very interesting uh, people and at the same time uh, that got me interested to, uh, to take the Philippine Foreign Service officers exams as a, as a as a way to also help uh, our people. So as Dr. Aaron said, and Rose of the line, uh, from the career, I will be actually, not in a few years time, uh, Dr. Aaron, I am retiring next year. <laughs> I'm, uh, our mandatory age of retirement in the Philippines for public service is 65, so I'll be uh, 64 this year. So I suggested her to continue her career into teaching. She has lost her <laughs> and she should. Well, uh, actually, I should. Uh, uh, I think the students, you know, of uh, MBA should. Uh, I should learn from you how to start a business. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I, I know we, we have very limited time. So um, again, um, I thank very much uh, the Assumption University for this uh, kind invitation. I have my colleagues here, Mr. Vito Mariano, who is our uh, commercial uh, attaché. Um, and uh, if I forget any figures or not, uh, he will be the person to uh, to provide you uh, with those uh, data. And of course, I have my second secretary and consul, uh, Ms. Uh, Anna Marie, uh, Anna Marie, Anna Marie <laughs> Santos. Uh, she was actually born and raised here. Because her parents were, uh, were former diplomats at the Philippine Embassy. And we're so happy that, you know, um, she took the Philippine Foreign Service Officers exam. And, uh, and uh, her very first posting is here. So we could be looking at the future Philippine ambassador to Thailand, the servers in the Thai language. Although I've been here for two and a half years, I, I do regret I, I'm not able to learn yet the Thai language because of my senior years. Well, anyway, I, I just I just want to concentrate on Philippines uh, building for growth, not my growth physically, but uh, anyway. Um, so to brief you about the growing potential for trade, business, investment, and overall economic development in the Philippines through this uh, presentation of Philippines Building for Growth. I would just like to acknowledge also that, you know, this PowerPoint presentation is the collective efforts of the, uh, 
of uh, Ms. Ana Santos, of Mr. Rico Mariano, and also my other officer who will soon be leaving us um, is going back to the Philippines, but he's having a multilateral uh, section as well as uh, the, uh, uh, the ASEAN. So um, I just wanted to show that here, I want to, to cover, uh, it just gives you a, um, uh, uh, pictures of uh, Manila, uh, this is Manila, uh, Manila uh, Cebu, and Macau. So these are the three big, uh, three big main islands uh, in the Philippines. Uh, so for an outline of my presentation, I just would like to share with you very briefly, you know, the Philippine Chairmanship of ASEAN last year, as well as the opportunities in the Philippines and the current program of President Duterte on Build, Build, Build. Um, all right, as you, as you know, last year we had the privilege and honor of chairing the uh, chairmanship of uh, ASEAN at the time when the association was also uh, celebrating its uh, 50th anniversary. As we all know, you know, uh, Bangkok is the birthplace of ASEAN, and uh, next year, uh, Thailand will be hosting uh, the uh, chairmanship of, uh, of uh, ASEAN. So um, this is just, you know, um, a, a few things, you know, uh, the, some milestones uh, celebration uh, that took place uh, last year uh, regarding our 40th anniversary of our dialogue relations with the United States, uh, Canada, and the European Union, as well as with India. And of course, the 20th anniversary of ASEAN Plus 3, which, is, uh, which are the uh, China, Japan, and the Republic of uh, Korea. So, um, of course, we also had the uh, ASEAN Interparliamentary um, uh, Assembly, and they celebrated also their uh, 40th, 40th year. And uh, of course, uh, we had several uh, meetings that we hosted, about 141 uh, meetings with two summits, and uh, about 90 ministerial meetings, uh, senior officials, and technical working group. You know, since uh, I've, I've not been uh, assigned in our ASEAN office in the Department of Foreign Affairs, but uh, I had the privilege of being the Philippine representative in uh, the high-level task force in 2014 during the chairmanship of Myanmar when we had to review the um, uh, when we reviewed the, um, uh, the how to strengthen the ASEAN Secretary, as well as uh, review the ASEAN uh, uh, organs and uh, different uh, bodies, and um, I didn't realize that ASEAN, in one given year, we have about over a thousand meetings. Really? Yes, and uh, you know there are only about 600, 365 days in a year, so uh, so it's it's a, it's a very uh, it's a very uh, uh, huge task uh, on all the ASEAN member states and also particularly on the part of the ASEAN uh, uh, Secretariat. Um, so next year this would be uh, the, the, the task of, uh, of Thailand. Of course last year we had the grand celebration uh, of the 15th anniversary which uh, took place uh, on the 8th um, of August and wherein we invited the uh, representatives or um, relatives of the former five original signatories. And of course, in the case of uh, Thailand, uh, uh, Mr. Thailand Koman was uh, represented, I believe is a nephew, by uh, Amarin Koman. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, we also invited former uh, Secretary General of, of the ASEAN, we had also the privilege of, uh, of uh, receiving uh, the late uh, Dr. Suleen. Yes, we were so quite sorry when he, he passed away uh, last year, uh, in November, it's actually. 
a major contributor in the, in the development of ASEAN. He has also written a lot of uh, things about ASEAN and how to uh, improve it. And uh, well, next slide, please. Uh, well, I think you know you all know uh, the six thematic priorities which uh, our chairmanship um, focus on, but I would just like to focus uh, on this uh, inclusive innovation that group. Of course, as you know, there are uh, three ASEAN uh, community pillars. We have the uh, political security pillar, we have the ASEAN economic uh, uh, community pillar, as well as the uh, social cultural uh, pillar. But perhaps the uh, uh, your 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 interest probably will be more on the economic uh, since you all uh, doing uh, since you all want to be business businessmen come up with your own uh, uh, business companies. So um, anyway, uh, of course, the theme that we had there was you know, partnering for change and engaging uh, the world. So these are just some of the uh, uh, objectives that, uh, uh, that the uh, Philippines uh, initiated uh, during its uh, chairmanship. I really don't want to go uh, very much into the details uh, we will send to you our PowerPoint uh, presentation, and I think with the with the write up, so that you know we can probably have more time for the question uh, question and answer. But you know this this is uh, really to increase trade and investment, and how to integrate the um, micro, small, medium um, uh, enterprises in the global chain, and to develop an innovation driven. Uh, economy. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, next slide. Uh, these are just other uh, uh, events and uh, that took place uh, during our chairmanship and also some uh, initiatives. Uh, the seven M's of inclusiveness and innovation, uh, I think it's an initiative by our uh, foreign trade uh, Secretary, uh, which means uh, mindset, mastery, mentoring, markets, money, machines, and models of business. So you can ask Mr. Mariano for that uh, later on if you wish to know more. But uh, this one, uh, Slingshot at ASEAN, this is for startup uh, businesses. And uh, the concept, who, 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 made, who prepared this concept is uh, Mr. Bayan. So uh, maybe you can elaborate on this uh, later on. But uh, this is to uh, showcase investment uh, ready startups for potential local and international um, investors, as well as to facilitate easy access of information between government and uh, uh, running startup development programs in, in this uh, region. Uh, just some basic uh, uh, data about uh, opportunities in the Philippines. Uh, it is expected that by 2020, uh, the population would have uh, reached about 110 uh, million, which of course this would trans this would translate into a uh, an expansive domestic market throughout the country and uh, and uh, the availability also of highly skilled and technical uh, labor. Um, it is, it, we are generally a young population, except me of course, because I'm entirely next year. The median age, age is 23.1 uh, uh, years old. So by uh, 2020, uh, people aged between 55 and 64, or the working age uh, population will be 70.5 million. So simply put, we have a, a, a large, young, productive population ready to help power uh, the ASEAN economy. So um, of course, in the case of uh, the English language, uh, the Philippines is uh, uh, proficient in that. And uh, this has uh, paid the way for the development 
of our uh, business processing um, sector, process uh, sector, and not only in Manila but also in uh, other cities like Cebu, Laguna, Cagayan de Oro, and Davao in the other uh, segments of the Philippines. So, um, let me. Uh, I just want to share with you some of these uh, um, Philippine companies that have a uh, presence in um, in the ASEAN uh, countries. Like for instance, uh, Goldilocks. Uh, Goldilocks. Uh, we have uh, in Thailand and as well as in Singapore. Potato corner we have it here in Thailand and Indonesia. San Miguel, all ASEAN countries. And uh, the Universal Rubina Corporation, which is this one, um, we they have it in Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. And the International Container Terminal Services is uh, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, Penchup, uh, they have presence in Thailand and Vietnam. And uh, Jollibee, this one, has its presence in Brunei. And Singapore. Um, uh, my officer was just telling me about uh, this story that uh, uh, that you may have heard of this Thai actor, uh, Peach Pachara Chirakiwa. If you visited his social uh, media page, uh, you'll see him promoting a French fry store. That store happens to be a Philippine company, which started out as a small. Uh, MSME, uh, small SME, MSME cart, 25 years ago, using fabricated bicycle part. The Thai franchise of this uh, Philippine company is now one of the fastest growing uh, uh, in the world. And you can find stores here in Bangkok and as far as Krabi and Ayutthaya. So if you look at that, Price store. Um, so you can uh, just imagine, you know, the potential for any new uh, startup. But uh, anyway, I just want to go uh, briefly also in other growth sectors, which um, which is this uh, manufacturing and the business process um, outsourcing. Um, in uh, the manufacturing uh, in Subic, which is in Luzon. Uh, there are commercial, uh, these are commercial uh, ship manufacturers, and they continue to make their mark in the global uh, shipbuilding industry. So, um, if you see here on the on the left, uh, this is the one in uh, Subic. Uh, this is the TEU class container vessel uh, at the Subic Bay shipyard, shipyard of the Hanjin uh, Industries. So it is uh, uh, one of the biggest commercial vessels in the world, and it is uh, made in the Philippines. Now, in the business processing, uh, process outsourcing, uh, we are considered also as a powerhouse in the BPO sector, which has generated over $24 billion in revenues. And uh, the sector continues to grow and is diversifying into higher value added services and knowledge uh, uh, outsourcing. And uh, the, the two other pictures you see are in uh, Cebu. Cebu and Davao. Am I correct? This one? They're both in Cebu? Uh, okay. Other growth sectors are in this uh, construction, material, services, hotel development, Logistic, food processing, machinery, and machi uh, machinery for uh, manufacturing. Okay, in this in this uh, final part of this uh, presentation, uh, we'll be showing the Philippines' uh, current uh, infrastructure drive. And uh, before we proceed with the uh, with the other slides to show you the infrastructure program of uh, uh, the current uh, administration. Uh, let me explain why we believe, uh, why this is the formula for growth in our country. Now in this slide, 
uh, we will show you what has kept the country from achieving its uh, full potential. And this uh, night, uh, night lights data, this is from the U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. And here we, sh uh, we show a, a, map, a map of the Philippines. Uh, this is the uh, Luzon part, uh, which uh, represents the lights that are turned on at night. So this is the top half of the, of the map, and the next slide will show the bottom half of the of the of the Philippines. Now, uh, this kind of data illustrates the concentration of economic activity. So these are the the in Cebu and the Mao. Uh, something that you cannot get from uh, from a, a typical geographic map or satellite photo. So as uh, we can as can be seen here, uh, there is a heavy concentration of activities around the. Metro Manila in, uh, in uh, Luzon, and, uh, and the, the reason is that most of the infrastructure investments um, in the past have been concentrated um, in, in that area. So as such, the growth of the other areas were uh, constrained. So now let me just go through uh, briefly on the uh, administration's uh, infrastructure development plans, build, build, build. Uh, President uh, Duterte envisions uh, to reduce uh, poverty incidence from 21.6% in 2015 to about 13 to 15% at the end of his term, which is uh, 2022. So among the reforms that will drive this agenda is the acceleration of infrastructure and the development of industries that will yield robust growth across the archipelago, create jobs, and uplift the lives of our people. So uh, briefly, there are about 75 flagship projects, which uh, amount to about $36 million. Uh, Dollars. So um, uh, these projects will include the uh, railways uh, north and south of Manila, the Mindanao Railway starting from the Bau, the Bau. So there are also uh, major airports that will be upgraded and uh, some uh, major islands that will be connected uh, by bridges. So all these projects are meant to spread development beyond uh, Manila, which is the capital of our city. So um, as we all know, plans are not easy to make. And so how long do we have to wait to see uh, progress? So uh, in the next uh, few slides, we just want to show you uh, the, the progress of some of these uh, projects. So here we have the Cagayan International Airport, set, which is set to receive its first commercial flight. I think this is uh, the first commercial flight, I think will come from Macau, no? if I understand it. So uh, this one will be serving, the, uh, this international airport will be serving uh, uh, international charter flights for tourists and businessmen uh, here in this area that go to the, uh, there is a the Cagayan economic uh, zone in this area. So um, next, next slide. Oh, this is, um, so this is about 100 kilometers north of Manila. So we are building a new city, which is uh, called the New Clark uh, City. Uh, this is the blue, the blue uh, square there. And uh, the construction for this uh, new airport terminal for Clark uh, started uh, this year. And uh, the aim of, uh, of, of Clark is to be uh, next door, uh, has to be the alternative to uh, Metro Manila, which is uh, the one in the red square. So as Clark grows, we expect to see some decongestion in Manila. So uh, here in, in uh, Clark, this new Clark uh, City, uh, the last month the construction began for this new government center 
uh, which is uh, planned to open in uh, 2019. So uh, the first phase of this uh, 200 hectare would involve the development of backup offices for some various government agencies. And uh, the uh, phase 1A will include the construction of a world-class sports complex, which will consist of a stadium of about, uh, with a seating capacity of 20,000 and an aquatic center for uh, 20,000 uh, seating capacity uh, that will uh, be completed in time for the Philippines to host the uh, Southeast Asian Games um, in the last quarter of uh, 2019. So, uh, uh, so this project will cost about 13.16 uh, billion pesos. Is it pesos? I don't, we don't have the, U.S. dollar equivalent. And so the next one is a very, very project, which is 106 kilometers from Manila to Clark. And construction started this year, and um, and the operations uh, are expected to uh, to start in 2021. So this will uh, provide the link to the Clark International uh, Airport. Uh, which is uh, expected to open in 2022. So next is, uh, this is the new Bingo International Airport. Uh, this is where the familiar Mayon Volcano is, uh, which is famous for its uh, perfect cone shape. We know that uh, recently it, uh, it has uh, it erupted, but they said that even the eruption made the cone even even more perfect. So, uh, so the direct international flight for this new uh, international airport is being able to start in early 2020. And uh, the president uh, last year ordered that uh, the size of the airport's uh, terminal should be increased and release the, the funds to complete this new uh, airport. Now, if we go to the middle, one of the middle islands, uh, uh, this is in Mantan, Cebu. Uh, this new um, international airport in Cebu uh, will be the Philippines' second business international gateway. And the construction which uh, began in uh, 2016 is, uh, will be completed by July of this year. And in contrast to the usual glass and steel airport, this resort team airport will be the largest structure of its kind in Asia made out of laminated wood. From Belgium? From oh, sorry, from Austria. Is anyone here from Austria? Okay. So, um, anyway, these are just some of the international flights that will uh, come out of uh, Cebu um, in December. In December last year, uh, Philippine uh, Airlines uh, opened its uh, direct flight from Bangkok uh, to Cebu. So uh, for those of you who may have uh, future interest in doing business in Cebu from here, so you have this uh, uh, direct flight now. Of course, next to uh, Cebu, we have the island of Bohol which is uh, famous for its uh, uh, chocolate hill. So this is also one area where we also want to promote uh, uh, tourism and at the same time um, uh, some, some more development uh, in the region. So the airport is uh, being built, uh, well, which started, it started in 2015. This is in the uh, Panglao uh, area, Panglao Island, where there's a huge uh, 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 resort. And uh, like the Bicol International Airport, the president also ordered a faster construction schedule as well as increase the budget for a larger uh, terminal. So, um, and I just want to mention here that uh, recently the government has embarked on five big ticket projects in the Mindanao um, area, 
So um, this one is called the uh, Malito Book. Uh, well, it's an irrigation. It's an irrigation project that will service almost 10,000 hectares of land in um, in uh, 56 conflict affected areas. And the cost here, well, we don't have the, the the dollar equivalent, but it's about 5.4 billion. So in this uh, the second one is uh, this one. Uh, this is the bridge. This is the bridge project that will connect uh, two cities actually, the Tangu uh, city in Misamis Oriental and uh, Tubud Lanao del Norte. So this is the bridge that is expected to be completed. Um, but construction started this year, and it is uh, expected to be completed in 2021. Uh, the third one is the uh, improvement of the airport. The airport, uh, can we go back to the previous slide? Yeah, this one, not the other one. Not before that. <coughs> Before that, yeah. So this is the the third one, which is uh, the improvement of the uh, Legendian Airport projects. So uh, this is expected to be completed in uh, 2025. And uh, the the fourth one, and here this is in the vow. Uh, there is also the expansion and improvement of the the Vau International Airport as well as the 102 kilometer Mindanao railway project. Uh, phase one, uh, segment one will be worth uh, 35, 35 uh, billion pesos. This will connect the Bao city to Tago and, and Vigo. So uh, this is the one expected to be completed in uh, 2021. So these are the various uh, uh, infrastructure uh, projects that are um, under the uh, uh, build, build, build program of, uh, of, of the president. And uh, we hope or we would like to invite you that, uh, uh, to visit the Philippines and uh, to see for yourself you know, the business potential in the Philippines. And um, as we say, uh, the Philippines is open for business and trade. And uh, we hope that you will consider joining the growth momentum in the Philippines as future uh, business leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and innovators of Thailand and the other, uh, the other countries. And um, of course, right now uh, in the Philippines, it is summertime just like uh, here in, in Thailand. And um, if you have the opportunity, um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, there's now a direct flight uh, to, uh, to Cebu. And I think uh, we have some brochures to, uh, to give away uh, uh, this um, to all of you. So we just want to flag here uh, uh, how you can get in touch with us and also with our uh, trade office here in Bangkok for any uh, future uh, business interest. So uh, please uh, don't be shy in uh, uh, approaching us. Um, and uh, anyway, I, th I thank you very much for your kind attention. and maraming salamat. Thank you, Ambassador Mary Jo. I, I, I want to reinforce, uh, I have uh, paid a lot of attention to the presentation. I think that is a very complete picture uh, that is very useful for our students. So I have can make an initial promise that I will bring a group of students to visit. Uh, some of them, they have field trips. Some of them, they go as far as in Europe. Right? So I can bring them to visit in the Philippines. Now, each individual of you have the potential to have a business. You just see in Philippines, or in business you need network, you need opportunities. The opportunities is now, as presented by the ambassador, is opening up. And from, let me just regroup back. 
the countries you see from the, the night pictures, right? It's all in in, uh, in in Manila. And now, by the way, I think they still have seven thousand over islands in the over seven thousand islands, and they need to connect these islands, right? And you you, you look back in some of the classes I teach. If you don't have connection, it's difficult to do business. That's why there is no growth. So infrastructure, that's in her follow-up uh, presentation, she talked about infrastructure. But before that, I want to talk about the, the, the first part of her presentation. He talks about the importance of ASEAN, right? ASEAN plus three and ASEAN plus six. ASEAN plus six, they will include India, right? Unfortunately, I have Europeans uh, not in mind, but then, of course, this is an ASEAN discussion. But the opportunities are very much in in ASEAN, ASEAN plus six will represent more than two thirds of the world's population, right? And ASEAN plus three with, with Japan and China uh, and Korea, you find they are really substantial. They have innovation. I think right from the beginning, the, the new president, I was quite old now, the president uh, has been. See, you need you need good management of a country. Some countries will take a long time and they have no progress. And I see from this presentation, they have a lot of plans, and all of them are very, very uh, upcoming in the airports, right? They are connecting. You can fly straight there, and then if I were you sitting down here, you know, 30 years younger, I'll be, I'll be on the next flight to Philippines. <laughs> because there's so many opportunity. Because basically, the Chief Ambassador Mary Jo also talks about her uh, companies that are wanting to come out. I think in our international uh, business, we are always talking about you know, international business, you are MBA, you have to go and do global, global business, right? not just in your own country. Now, in, now you have, actually, you do not have to worry about what, what product, what service should I do. Then product and services are all there. All you need to do is just fly there and meet up with some people, meet the connection of the, the trade uh, attache here and the, 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 the second uh, council here from uh, Philippines. You can just say, who should I meet? And all you have to do is just go there and say, can I, can I help? They need help to build, to expand the business in all the rest part of the world. Now, they, you see that, that part, as you mentioned, in the, the companies that are coming out as franchise. Now, all you have to do is go there, the business is really all done. You just say, I represent you in, in, in your country. Your country is so big in India or China. You just have one small part, right? and then you have a business. Why do you need to start the whole business? You just talk to somebody who's really done some proven, proven product and services, and they want to expand. They cannot come out and stay in a country which is so foreign to them. They, they need network, they need language, they need the culture, they need... And if you are able to just connect and build trust with them, that is your business in your country. So let's, let's take the opportunity. Go visit them, talk to them, and connect with them. You have a business. You guys are all MBA. I always encourage you to start something. Do something on your own. Now there is opportunity. Now it's just there for you to just tap on it you will be a very successful business in your country. We have many others, but then our, our, our students, I realize from them, they just say, what do I do, what should I do? So then, just take a flight, go there, talk to some relevant people, make one or two more trips, and that was what I did when I was a younger businessman. Just run, run very fast, it's all there. Right? And then you can build your own business. And then we had a very good opportunity. You guys, that's why I say, Whilst I, mean, I, I spent 20 years to get before I get to retire, I expect you guys to spend 15 years. You will reach the pinnacle of business. You will reach the pinnacle of business if you take my advice and just connect. If you want to start your own product and services and manufacturing, it will take you years. There are people who are ready to, to, to engage you. There are people who are really, really, really to partner with you. They can't come to where you are. They can't, this is where the, the key part of your, of your learning. How can I build relationship with a potential partner? What do I know about this country? For the first time, I see a country who is very excited about their own management of the country and build the connection. And they, of course, they are interested in their own domestic growth. But they have lots of opportunity with, with, the, with the international world outside. right? And you can just fly in and partner with them. You can bring your business over there, or you can bring your business outside. You have a natural partner. The last ambassadorial, the, uh, speaker of the month was the in Turkey, right? Armenia. I talked about the ambassador for Armenia. I, I also promised him I, I will I will bring some students and visit with you in Turkey, just in the border between the they were previously Russia. It's a long way away, but we have somebody here who's just coming you know, with a lot of opportunity. How 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 long do we take to fly to, to wherever in three hours? Three hours. Yeah. And they speak good English, right? And you guys are all in very good uh, business language. So. Maybe we should really set up 
a, a schedule that I can regularly meet up with people there. I can bring students to see, to talk to you guys. And they are really, they are really here finishing their study, opening up their mouth and saying, look, what can I do? It comes from different cultures. Right. Lots of Thais, lots of Indians, lots of Chinese. And then we have more Europeans. The Europeans are getting smart. They come here and find opportunities now. The, the Americans hasn't arrived, but then they, they will soon come. Right? And then they, are, they are here. So we need to connect with them. You need the network. We have the representative from the Philippines. And they have the office. And you can really connect with them with, with the, just through that. The address, I hope some of you, I didn't see any one of you copied. But that is where you should write in the letter. I was at the presentation, I want to go there. I, I want to find somebody that I can connect with. I want to see a company. Oh, they will connect you with, with the company. And then if they just write to the company and just talk to them, which means I want to do, develop some, some partnership with them. That's it. That's all you take. So please, I, I, I don't know you are in any rush of time. You, you have until 11.30. So you, you, I, I would like to open the, the question, uh, question and answer time for you to get to know them. And subsequently, please uh, meet the mind that I will, this is the first occasion we, we connect with you. And I will further connect with you when I, even quite immediately, you kind of, kind of come to me and I say, we organize a trip to visit with them. Right, let's, let's go and see them. I talk about, you know, visiting Malaysia, I talk about visiting Indonesia, this is ASEAN. I, their chairmanship last year, whatever they organized, was important. It was important because they need to organize the secretariat is in Sri Jagara, I believe. But is this an office? Their leadership. Every year it changes. Now it comes to the chart Thailand, apparently from, from the ambassador that just finished 2017, 2018 is in Thailand. Uh, After you are on your championship, Well, uh, this year it's Singapore's turn. Uh -huh. And then next year, the 2019, yeah. will be Thailand. And uh, next year is also um, another uh, opportunity for us uh, to celebrate our 70 years of formal diplomatic relations with Thailand. And I think among uh, the ASEAN countries, I think it, was, it is with uh, Thailand that we first established formal diplomatic relations, 70 years. Although, of course, I think our, the people-to-people -people contact and maybe even trade, you know, even goes beyond that. Don't worry about your your future. If compared to my time, I, I was just like you sitting down there, what should I do? How can I be successful? But right now I can be, you know, very confidently telling you that there are people who want to expand. There are people who have resources, they can partner with you. And all you do is just how can I help you so that I can help myself? Because they need help. They, they can't go to the Indians, they can't go to the Chinese, they can't go to the foreign market. They need they need grow their business. That's why it's grow, 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 and now they're building their own infrastructure. It's easier to travel there. You see the airport, the, the plug base, uh, it was a military airport now. Is it the same place they expect? Yes, that was a, that was a former uh, U.S. Uh, air base. Yeah. And the Subic, the Subic was a former U.S. naval base. But it has been turned into... So they have already some, some existing community, and now they're just building infrastructure. Every country, if you go from the Indians to the Chinese, they're all building infrastructure now. Airport, roads, bridge, you know, all. And I, you know, 40 years ago, I talked about the kind of boss was American. I said, very funny for the weekend, he said, Cebu. They were going to very Cebu. I thought it was S-I-B-U, but as you see, e there's another S-I-B-U in Sarawak, 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 I was a younger man. But every weekend, goes to Cebu. Why do you say, why are you going to Cebu? Because I go diving the best, diving the the Cebu Airport is uh, run by a, by a company from India, GMR. Okay. Yeah, India tourists go there and they're running their airport now. I think somebody can speak your language yeah, there. And so somebody is really done before you. But why not? And Cebu is a, it's a nice place, I believe, and people will go to Cebu. Now they have an airport which is open in night. You can fly direct. I hope you can fly from Bangkok to Cebu. Can we fly direct from Bangkok to Cebu? Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's the new direct flight, like, 6th December. Yeah. Philippine Airlines uh, opened a new route uh, in December. And is it this month or next, next month? month? Yeah, next month it will be dated. If you go there with the mind, what shall we do with former group? We go and visit Philippines. With their connection, with their, with, their, with their encouragement, we go. With their support. 
Okay, now I open it to you to ask questions. You have you both the presentation. You can ask on the slides. I'm excited about the, 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 the view of a market which is ASEAN. ASEAN can be this 10 country, but ASEAN can be ASEAN plus 3, ASEAN, ASEAN plus 6, which is two thirds of the world market. You just have to connect with them. Right? And they're reading. So please ask questions to Ambassador Mary Jo, please. Any questions? You know, we're all three here, or you can ask us in private if you wish, by email. So we have uh, indicated our uh, email uh, addresses, as well as our, um, our web, web page, website. For next year, I have to think of, you know, what I do during retirement. much for your question. I think it's a very uh, important question. Uh, actually, uh, the purpose of this uh, infrastructure uh, uh, program is with infrastructure comes development. And also um, with the foreign investments, that, uh, you know, you, you are able to provide job opportunities for the local uh, community. And the program also includes um, uh, training for the uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises, the startups. So um, actually, uh, uh, Rico's uh, Department of Trade and Industry, we do have startup programs, you know, and these are all over the country uh, for, uh, for small uh, businesses and how to start up uh, with some e-commerce uh, learning uh, tools. I think that's something I need to learn when I retire. So, um, so uh, this thing, and of course, you know, with tourism, uh, I've always uh, thought that uh, tourism uh, is also an engine for inclusive, uh, inclusive growth, because even the, even the those just making, you know, gift items, can participate in the growth of the community. So, um, of course, there has to be some balance also with the environment, because that's also important for. Um, you know, to sustain the, uh, the, the rural development. So, um, so there are some programs, I'm sorry I did not mention here, but you know, um, it is actually an integrated approach as well to bring uh, rural development outside of the, outside of the uh, uh, big cities. So I think to supplement that uh, answer, once you have infrastructure, 
and then things will start to happen because right now I can't even get to that place without a lot of difficulty. Nobody goes to do anything. But once they are connected, then why you want to go to that place? And you want to talk to somebody and then I have maybe I can use this community to do something and you can bring something from somewhere and you get and then the job will start to grow. And then well, once they have job they will start to consume and that the whole economy will start to begin. Right now you have different people without any connection. They are in islands, they are not in, maybe even not proper road to connect. So all countries are facing this problem without uh, 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 growth because they do not, they cannot connect the people uh, conveniently. And now you can see the emphasis on, on the, the, the presidents, the Duterte's, uh, on, on infrastructure building as number one. Once you have infrastructure, things will, will happen, right? And you guys should, number one, be thinking about Ah, I can go there. I can see what they can help me with my things. I can see what they can do. I can start a company there. Even if you have no money to start, once you go there, you look around, then you can draw up a plan, then you can come back here, and you look for a venture capitalist and say, I can do this business. I don't have money, but I will include you as my businessman. Right? You come with the money, I come up with the operation, I go with them, and then we will have this. You work out on the plan, you will be successful. You don't need a lot of money to start your business. If you have idea, you have opportunities, you just have to find the guy. In this world, I always believe, lots of people have money but no ideas. Don't know what to do with the money. Put the money in the bank and that's all they do. But a lot of people have ideas but no money. You just have to go and find these people have money and say, I have good ideas. I, I will include you as one of my partners. You work with me. There are many people like that. They have no ideas. They have money. Right. They're, they're looking for, for opportunities like this. You know, you've got to run around. I found an idea. But I, I want to include you as a partner. You, you, you come with the money, we go there and invest. We're going to have seen that. But until you see that, you can't go back to the guy with the money because you ask him what do you have. Right? You have to go home there, you've got to go to plan, you've got to study, and then you find that, ah, I can do something there. Oh, I come back and find something. So don't be restrained, don't be constrained by, no, 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 no money, I can't do business. Now the opportunities are there. Yeah. Uh, in terms of inclusive growth, I uh, have like a specific example to share. A lot of our islands, uh, they're, they're sustainable fishers, fishermen, you know, like you're not really looking at uh, catching ex really exotic fish, but there's a lot of seafood that is like, when you sell it in Hong Kong, it's a thousand dollars, something like that. That's what, that's the reason why we have this thing for airports. Because uh, in the morning, we can fly in. We have all these old, old uh, converted airliners, the like propeller-driven ones. Every morning, our international airport is filled with all these small air airplanes, and they load up fish, high-value seafood, and uh, from the, these small airplanes, they are now flown by the airlines as part of the cargo, and they like go straight to Hong Kong for the hotels. These are live, live or really fresh fish. That's very very expensive, and so when we when we are developing all these airports, that includes the supply chain for uh, for the high value seafood. So like that farmer, he owns uh, like the fisherman. He's only talking to one trader, and then that trader just uses like uh, a third party logistics firm that doesn't make a cut out of the out of the shipment. It's just the most you've got so many layers from having uh, professional third-party logistics catching or taking charge of the shipment at the international airport. But, so it's just a very short chain now from the fisherman to the trader, just one layer, selling it and sending it straight to Hong Kong for thousands of dollars. So that's how we see, that's one specific example of the inclusive drive that we are, we are doing. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, what about the business uh, in tourism in Philippines? Because generally it's the maximum economy and it markets the whole country very well. What about the tourism business growth in the Philippines? You want to bring Indian tourists to yeah, the Philippines? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, are, are you guys saying that uh, it's a 7,060 islands there? Yes, yes. Um, we have not reached the same uh, number of tourist arrivals like in, in Thailand. I think uh, last year, about six million or something. Uh, and that's why, you know, all of these uh, uh, airports and uh, connectivity, you know, will drive also the uh, tourism uh, industry. And then, of course, we are also 
um, attracting tourism investments for you know hotel development or resorts or um, isn't there a, a Thai company that's coming out with budget hotel? Yeah, people are rushing there in the Rihanna is a NBA's major for tourism. Right. Yes, I think it's the, the Aerolan group is, is coming up with the budget hotel uh, in the Philippines. I think they started last year and they're not a construction. Because they also have the the uh, board of investment in their in their uh, we have the trade and investment combined under uh, one department. Well, because, uh, they're doing many things in the Philippines. No, I think that is also that is part of the uh, integrated approach to, to growth and uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, there has to be a balance also between uh, the uh, uh, construction, the infrastructure, development, as well as the environment. And we do have the Department of uh, Environment and, and uh, Natural uh, Resources uh, that, uh, that uh, take care of the, uh, the environment. Uh, as so I said, another agency, MBA Tourism uh, Management. So they go into textbooks, the textbook emphasize on, on uh, sustainability. Yeah. But that is not the only thing. You can say there's no transportation, nobody can get there. It's always there, nobody goes. So now they have to take the first step. They have to link, they have to improve the infrastructure, and people start to go. And I'm sure the subject of sustainability is all over the world, and with time, but you need to first study. Right now, there's no, no infrastructure. So why you want to look for sustainability? Yeah, I mean, it's always there, but then nobody goes there. So now you have to start having some people to go there. Right. So, 25 million is what the Thai arrival of tourists last year. And technically speaking, the 6 million can come to 25 million anytime. Because they have much better better uh, seaside and uh, much better uh, uh, new opportunity which are untapped. No, there's not help. Yeah, please. Uh, there's a lot of thought that was put in most of the, the new projects that uh, we featured. There are two airports here that we showed. The one with the volcano and the one with the aerial shot for Bohol. Before, because these were all classified as uh, secondary airports, and we had this mindset that secondary airports would just be 1,800 1, meters long, or 2,000 meters long. So that limits you to an A320. With an A320 or a 737, we do have the best connecting airports for an A320 or a uh, or uh, a 737, and that would be Suwanafu and Changi Airport. So before, we were saying that we have the best gateway airports in the world, Changi and Suwanafu, because, because now these projects are 2,500 meters long. That's a bit, there's a very big difference with that, because now we, these airports can now receive the A330, which are more long range. So that means we can have uh, like Australia, straight from Australia, straight from maybe like uh, somewhere closer like Eastern Europe, if you have these three long range AP30s or the 787. We can now handle even the one with the, uh, the photo with the aerial photo, that's the one in Bohol, which is just next to Cebu, can now get the red place straight from Europe. So that's a huge difference from like the small things. And uh, we can see now we have the, especially the, you call those people, the, those escaping winter? Yeah, yes. <laughs> the winter birds, they call that. Yes, yes, the old people who was run away from the, from, from the cold weather in Europe. Yes. And those are very subtle changes to the designs. Before they were like small airports where you, the, you had to go down by the stairs. But the president was very insistent. These should have really simple, full facilities. It's a really simple thing. They have elevators. <laughs> but that's very critical for the uh, market like uh, Windrovers. Yeah. So now is the right time. 
they are getting to begin. Now you want to join them and be part of that, or it, there's no nothing happened before because they don't have infrastructure. So now is the time that you can go and get involved. Yes, please. Uh, I want to ask that uh, what are the major contributions of Philippines in Asian in context of trade? How do you compare with the uh, European Well, I think for the trade, I'll leave it to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Rico. But I think ASEAN, uh, if we're talking about ASEAN and the, and the European Union, ASEAN is an association of countries. It is not a supranational body just like the European Union. So um, uh, we don't know whether we will go towards that direction. But uh, uh, I mean, so far, you know, uh, the way ASEAN ASEAN is, it's it's not a supranational uh, body. But there are in the uh, ASEAN Economic uh, Community, they do have um, uh, they have reduced uh, tariffs in uh, so many uh, products, and I think uh, for some ASEAN countries that uh, uh, I think like. The, the neighboring countries, you know, uh, because their level of economic development is uh, not in the same level as, as the rest, so they are into, into a transition. Transition, but uh, maybe uh, Rico can uh, say something more on this uh, as an economic community. But you know, more and more, um, uh, they're trying to harmonize rules and regulations, how to do business with ASEAN as a whole, and that's why. Um, this infrastructure uh, program of the president is actually also in line with the ASEAN connectivity framework. You know, um, we are a, we are. <laughs> well, we yes, we have uh, the uh, yeah. Our uh, friends from China have also expressed interest in the uh, infrastructure projects, and as well as other other uh, countries, uh, for which of course we are grateful because that is helping our uh, economic growth. And um, uh, but you know um, the Philippines is a, is an archipelagic uh, country. We understand we now have seven thousand six hundred islands. Of course, we cannot compare with our friends from Indonesia, which has about I think seventeen thousand more. So uh, connectivity is extremely important. You know, I mean for the for the mainland uh, Asia, like you know. Um, uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, uh, Laos, so they, you know, you're all in one landmass. Go down to to uh, Malaysia uh, and then cross over to Singapore. But for us, for Indonesia and the Philippines, you know, we, we have all these islands. Uh, I think some have already been bought, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if you want to say something uh, more. The ASEAN right now, since 2010, has uh, like it's called the ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement. So the tariffs have gone down. We are not yet a customs union, but because of the gi digital wave, almost it's gonna be like almost like a as easy as in the European Union, where trade is almost like uh, like very very smooth. We're not a customs union, but the tariffs are almost zero on everything within ASEAN. So when you're when we're pitching, for example, for investments, we say if you, for m my part, when you come to the Philippines, you can sell to ASEAN at zero tariffs. So that's what's happening with the ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement, which has been in force since 2010. So I guess where your question comes from, the contribution, I heard you would. In the past, when, they, when ASEAN, the countries were quite fragmented, that's why they are trying to organize them closer and closer and closer. So, and, and they can't they can't do very much for themselves. So the Europeans will go pick on the pick on the major cities in Manila. That's why they develop a lot in Manila because they come and do business in the in the, in the big city. But now they can help themselves. Now they are all all growing up. Even the Europeans have come in, and, and now it's for us. They are very close by. That's why ASEAN, the, the countries here. The contribution is now you do not they do not have to rely on big uh, uh, economic power they can do among themselves and if you want to get involved they are inviting you to come too so they are beginning to all countries in ASEAN is trying to be organized to be self-sufficient now 
they can develop their own economy. They do not have some to work, wait for somebody to come. But then, of course, it will be a you know an, an added advantage if they can help themselves, and at the same time, you can come and take take advantage. It's still going, growing their economy, and, and all countries in ASEAN. That's why we have this rotating chairmanship. They're always trying to organize ASEAN better and better, so that now you can actually. We, we are challenging, I, and the Europeans and Americans know it. They need to get involved in ASEAN now, not with one country. So the ASEAN is helping themselves, and they are growing themselves very rapidly. They don't need to get involved now, and because they themselves are getting involved among themselves now. So and they are coming. So those who are here, and you think, look from that perspective, you know, from European, from North America, I am now. I need to be part of ASEAN because that's what the Rico was mentioning. Once you are in ASEAN. You can be assured that they are the same, same uh, uh, treatment. It's all ASEAN because they are working towards it. It's not perfect. I know it's not perfect, but it will be perfected. Because that's what the intent is, so that we can trade more. But it's different country. Why it's not, not perfected? Because different countries have different, different timing of, of progress. You can't ask them to open up their market. But then now, but their objective is to come together. And they are working towards it. Every now and then they are making it better and better, so that, so that they can get into a a collective uh, 10 countries and, and, and so that they can work among themselves. If I may add, it, it would, it's not actually apparent, but 50% of Philippine exports is electronics. So our contribution to the global value chain is mostly in electronics. That, partly, that's why there's a problem of inclusive growth. This is high-tech manufacturing. If you are like a son of a farmer, you cannot be part of that value chain, but right now, that 50% is electronics and we actually have a race now with Thailand in uh, taking part in the value chain for the next generation of vehicles. What we're proud of is that we, uh, most of the technologies that we have right now are, are helping the development of self-driving cars. We don't have the software, but we are building a lot of the sensors, radars, uh, it's called uh, millimeter wave technology. We're highly advanced in millimeter wave technology and also in the cameras. Before the evolution of, for example, one of our camera companies, which is actually has uh, R&D in uh, Eastern Europe, uh, the small cameras used to be just used for backing up, right? But now with self-driving cars, you need eight, 16 cameras all over the cars. So we are actually in a race with Thailand to get more value in, in the self-driving car space. Hello, I have a question. Uh, sure, go ahead. Honorable uh, Ambassador Mary, uh, we are delighted to have you, Mary, and uh, Rico and Anne Mary. Right, um, so I uh, also want to thank you for spending the time here with us, right? Uh, so my, my question here is that uh, you had mentioned a program called the Slingshot Program for MSMEs, right? Uh, for starters in uh, Philippines, uh, uh, my question is how open are you for to foreign nationals for the program? Is it only for the uh, uh, people in the country, the citizens in the country? I think Rico can best respond to that. Yeah, uh, I founded the Slingshot program uh, in 2015. It was uh, actually, uh, it was used to develop the ecosystem. It, it's not the program like the one in uh, Startup Chile. Startup Chile does uh, puts in equity. Our programs are meant to build the ecosystem. So there's no no funding right now for no available. Right now. It's all it's all market based. Mostly people coming investors coming from long south in Singapore. That's uh, that's the bulk of. Uh, of the, the funding right now in the Philippines. Okay, so, so you're saying there's no MSME programs, is it? We, we do have SM, MSME programs that's different from the Slingshot. Slingshot is on the digital and the technology startups. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I suppose I, I got confused. So do you, is your MSME program supporting foreign nationals? Not at this point. It's uh, it's all in the provinces. Uh -huh. All right. Thank but you. Uh, if uh, you can elaborate privately in, in my email, sure, sure. So, we can discuss. So, Andre, your role is really to find your opportunities. Don't always look from a perspective that, does the government help me as a startup? 
right? And you should go look for them. Many people, right, I mentioned, just mentioned they have money, but they don't know where to go look for it. All you have to do is just connect, be, be willing to share. You don't go and start, you know, there, there are people, just find them, connect with them, and go run to the guy and say, you have money, I've got a nice opportunity, I, I will involve you, let's go. And that's it, they're all ready. Because they have, they are, they are just making the environment very conducive for growth, for change, which was not there before. I can see it. Yeah, go ahead. My is just a follow-up question. So why would the other countries would come and invest in Philippines if they have, if the government, uh, do they have any uh, attractive investments for the foreign countries to come and invest in Philippines? How do they attract other countries to come and invest over there? As in tax free status, as in stuff like that, right? Maybe, is that what you mean? Like five years tax free or something like that? Yes, there are, there are some incentives for the foreign investors. And uh, I think recently also, I think it was, uh, was it last year or this year, we had a tax reform, which uh, would be good for business. But maybe we can elaborate. Our biggest incentive right now is the 110 million market. <laughs> I like that. There's a, big, it, yeah. there's a big debate right now because we have some uh, tax reform and a lot of our incentives that were really given freely and it's unlimited, like no deadline. Uh, life, lifelong, zero, uh, five percent tax on gross income. Really? That's good. That, that was before. Now we have, uh, uh, we are changing it, but now, we are taking away the nationality. So you have no, you have no worry about uh, hundred percent work ownership. For export, that's not a problem. But the other incentives that we have, the six years tax, uh, no, uh, income tax holidays, we are reviewing that. But the great change now, the positive change, is that you can come into the Philippines, just try to serve the domestic market. And you can, if your company is into high technology or you're just not really high tech but it's new to the Philippines, then you will be entitled to those income tax holidays, very similar to what the Thai BOI have, but you can serve the domestic market. I have one follow up question. Please allow me to connect because uh, it's important. Uh, in Thailand, if you want to come in, you need to find a partner. It will be 51% ownership. I don't know the situation. That has stopped many people coming here. I come in here and invest, I have to give 51% of this country to the Thai. But that is their national policy. But what is the situation in here? So that's, that's what we're changing right now. Our current policy is mostly 70-30, or if you want to serve the domestic market, you have to export 70%. So you're only left with 30% to serve the domestic market. That's, what, what that's the change. Ownership. ownership for example, you're, but you are going to set up a hotel. Well, not hotel, because yeah. hotel is export. We classify hotel as export. For example, you're going to set up a building. You cannot own the land, because uh, uh, it has to be owned by a corporate entity that is 60-40, 60 towards the Philippi for the, in favor of the Filipino. But the building can be owned by the, by the foreign company. But the organization ownership, I come and set up a company, do I have to find a partner which is 51%? Not, not really, there are just a few uh, sectors where we have uh, restrictions, like retail, for example. Mm -hmm. You have to have $2.5 million or 200, it's either 2.5, sorry, I don't know. The limit is in the, the investment. In investment. If you're like a Walmart, you can come in, but if you're like a small mom and pop store, you cannot compete with the other mom. But we are lowering that in a few months. Actually up to just one hundred thousand dollars. Very soon. Does that answer your question? So uh, it doesn't answer the question. In fact, uh, so let's say I come to Philippines to start a company there, right? Because it's a small company, maybe ten people I could employ, right? And um, uh, probably uh, let's say I'm looking at e-commerce as a uh, business, right? Um, so is it, uh, is there a regulation where I can set up the company of with hundred percent ownership for myself, or is there uh, something that uh, I should have a Philippines partner? That is what Ajahn uh, Avran was telling. There are restrictions on a few activities. Retail is one. So if it's e-commerce, it has to be 
wholesale. You have to be B2B. You cannot go direct to the customers. Like here in Thailand, you cannot have a restaurant. A restaurant is uh, recognized as retail, and you have to have 51%. Only well, Thailand across the board. You want to say yeah, you need to find, yeah, everything. In the Philippines, we don't have restrictions like okay, that. Just in the some a few activities. All right. Across the board in Thailand. So we see that in China too. You can't go there and have a hundred percent ownership. So we, too, I believe. <laughs> so we all look forward to seeing you there. How do we get to? All right? Maybe just to suggest for my benefit, if I were to bring a trip, of course they want to see Cebu, I want to see Cebu. <laughs> so we should include the resort. And then what should we do? What should our itinerary be? To visit some industrial places, to meet some people. If I bring 10, 20 students, they, they, potentially they want to start a business in Philippines. How should I schedule the itinerary? In our experience, the the best uh, representative you could have who would be rooting for you would be another university. We can link you up with another university, especially one with their own MBA program. And then we will use them as our secretariat. We will still use, for example, my, my connections with the Chambers of Commerce, etc. But we, we, can, you know, we can focus, or like the fulcrum or the secretariat would be another university. So that, uh, because there's something in it for them. Because uh, naturally. They can help us to organize many, many, many things. Yeah, they can do the logistics for that. But of course, we will be here, the government national government will be here to connect you with some other people that they're not naturally networked with, like uh, economic zones, factories, and all that. Continue. Anybody here wants to come with me to Philippines? I'll go. Yeah, people are interested. This is only a small group of students who have here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so so that, that wraps up the discussion, but of course you are free to just uh, in, individually chat with them. But I have a, a present task to present uh, for to the ambassador for his uh, effort. Um, and maybe that we have, and after that we have some students to come together to take a picture with the ambassador. Uh, in front.